All right. Man, I love how one word can just silence like a hundred people. Okay, maybe not a hundred, eighty. Let's let's say eighty people. Uh, <laughs> I mean, in Finland, the best uh, the best word to silence a room full of people is like, anyone got questions? <laughs> That's pretty much the best way. Okay, uh, let's continue with the show. Uh, before we uh, get into uh, into the next presentation, I have to unfortunately uh, announce that uh, Michael Tolin from Little Nightmares couldn't come here today due to being sick. So unfortunately, after guys talk, uh, Michael won't be here and we will have a short break before Carolina's presentation. So, but uh, without further ado, there is a certain someone on my right side that has flown from a little bit further away uh, to give you a presentation, and actually like three of them this weekend, and starting on with the first, Guy Slanders. Thank you. There's the point. Right, hello everybody. Thank you for staying and not going to the other panel. Uh, it's always nice to see that someone wants to listen to me talk for a little bit, but you can leave whenever you like because it's me talking, I understand. I also understand that you're Finnish and I have spent the last two wonderful days being taken around by my wonderful minders, my babysitters basically, to make sure that I don't commit any crime because I am from South Africa. Um, but I have had two wonderful days in Finland where everyone keeps telling me, oh, the Finnish people are very reserved, they're very quiet and they don't ask questions. So that's fine. I used to be a lecturer, and my students didn't ask questions either. So I have a tactic. If I don't get questions, I point randomly <laughs> and ask you to ask me a question. So I would encourage you to ask questions. However, I also don't like just standing here and talking for 45 minutes, because that's a really long time to talk. So this is an interactive session about bananas and expectations. All right. Now, it doesn't matter whether you are a novelist or a gamer, programmer, or a role player, or a playwright. The topic I'm talking about, expectation, applies to you very specifically. And it's a very powerful tool that you can use at any point to test out whether your idea is good or not. And that's something that I think everybody struggles with. You go, oh, I've got a great idea. And you start writing it down, and three days later you go, I, 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 and you throw it away, because you don't know what you were thinking. So expectation is a really powerful weapon that you can use to do a lot of things in the creative space. So when you see that, what do you expect? Let's start the process so that we can terrorize Finland and I'll never get invited back. So let's go all the way over there, purple shirt right at the back on your phone. <coughs> what do you expect when you see that? I mean, has this series actually even made it out here? I assume it has, since it's made it all the way to Japan. When you see that, what do you expect? You're not sure. Okay, can someone help him? There we go, right at the back. What do you expect? You expect them to die, absolutely, absolutely. You expect them to die, 100% correct. All right, let's move on to the next one. What do you expect when you see that? Let's go blue hair in the back. I know that gets a lot of Finnish people nervous because you guys love coloring your hair, it's fantastic. What do you think when you see that? Maybe you don't... You expect to be eaten. Okay, so we expect everyone to die. We expect to be eaten. I think there's a theme here. What do you expect when you see that? Let's go. There we go. You expect a triangle drama. <laughs> That's fantastic. Yes, absolutely. Does anyone know where this is from, by the way? Yes, Westworld, there we go, and we're all waiting for season two with bated breath. All right, so you expect a triangle drama. That's fantastic, because 
Of course, we've got three people in the picture that we can see in focus, and there's all sorts of things that go along with that. What do you expect when you see that? Apart from 15-year-old boys. <laughs> next Wednesday. Next Wednesday. What happens next Wednesday? See, I'm not, I'm, I don't play Lara Croft, uh, Tomb Raider, so is that when it comes out again? Another one? Yeah. Okay, great. Good, good. We needed another Lara Croft. Right, fantastic. Okay, we expect traps, we expect traveling, we expect wet cleavage. What do we expect when we see that? Running. Running. <laughs> there we go, absolutely. I usually expect most people your age to go, who is that? I don't know what that is. Because this movie came out a very long time ago. All right? What do we expect? When we see that, apart from remakes. <laughs> Lots of running and being eaten and everyone dying, right? So <clears throat> let me just check. There's no 13 year olds here. No, OK. What do we expect when we see that? Does anybody know what that is? And it's an interesting test if you do. It's a meme. It's also a highly successful production. From Thailand, it's a gay porno called Jurassic Pork. <laughs> Those are the actual dinosaurs, by the way, in the, uh, in the show. I, of course, have not watched it at all, I promise you. I didn't get right to the end. All right, so expectation. Now, you've come up with these just from... Do you have a leak? No, you for really science. don't. You really... <laughs> for, for science, right? Okay. So, expectation, this is going off on its own now. All right, well, here we go. Let's see where it ends up. Did I click it too fast? Can I go back? Um, I expected a technical fault. That's fine. Okay, back to porn, right? <laughs> All right, so it's individual, it's collective, it's personal, and it's universal. So, it's like what? It's like everything. Expectation is individual, and I'm going to be unpacking what these means as we go along and how you can use these as a tool in your arsenal. Some of them are going to apply to yourself, some of them are going to apply to your product that you are creating, the story that you are writing, and some of them are basically going to allow you to rein yourself in, to pull yourself back, and to look at your project and decide whether or not it's going to work. Okay, now we can go to the next one. Expectation is not stereotyping. It's not fixed. It's not unchanging, because it does change, and it's not judgmental. What expectation is, is it's like this unconscious understanding of something. And remember we said that it was individual. So different people will expect different things. It doesn't matter that it's, I expect trees and Vikings running around in Finland, right? But that's because that's how I've been raised to think of the... Scandinavian countries is everyone wears horned helmets and that's about it, right? There's Valkyries running around taking the men off to do things to them and, and, and <laughs> yes, well, I haven't met any yet. So I want to do an exercise with you. What do you expect from, now, I, I, does this have a pointer on it? I don't know. All right, let's just work our way through. What do you expect from that lady sitting on the far left, uh, sitting down? What do you expect from her? What do you think when you see her? I think of Tokyo, which is where I live now, because she looks like she could come from Tokyo, right? I think she could be a mother. Does she look she's about 40-ish? I don't know. Somewhere around there? What about the lady standing behind her in that awful striped shirt? She shouldn't wear those vertical stripes, darling. It really doesn't work for you. That's my opinion, but she does look broad, right? What do we expect from her? Does she chop up people and keep them in her fridge? I don't know. Let's talk about the lady in the cowboy boots with the pink scarf. She looks very proud of herself, doesn't she? She looks like she's either in charge or she has something over all of these other women. What about the one in the pink dress? She's almost overdressed for everyone else, isn't she? So we're expecting different things. They're all women. We can pull out anything that we like. Let's go all the way over to the lady from Nigeria. 
I can say she's from Nigeria because I know with the Nigerian dress, I'm originally from South Africa. So she's wearing a Nigerian or Tunisian costume. So that means she's either been there, she's from there. She went to a fashion boutique store in New York and bought that outfit because she wanted to connect with her roots. I don't know. But that's an expectation that we might have from her. Let's look at this expectation. Hopefully. What do we expect from these men? Put up your hands or I'll start pointing. Yes. You expect that from prison. Can you elaborate as to why? As to why? Well, I don't know. They look all really posh and they're all wearing very simple clothes and they're posing around like, you know, hey, look outside. Look and it they, says prison on their <laughs> <laughs> And it says prison on their pants. Well, actually, I did not see that. There we go. Okay. <laughs> this is a photograph of rapists and murderers who are in a prison, and they're part of a yoga class. That's what they do. They're doing yoga, and that's why they took this photograph, to show what a wonderful new life they have in prison. So that's challenging our expectation. We expect them to be prisoners. We expect them to be convicts, perhaps because of the way they look, or because of what is written on their shirts and things. But we didn't necessarily expect yoga. All right? And that's an important Thing, obviously, because I put it in the slide presentation, right? But it's important because expectation allows you to present something to your audience and then add something new to that and build upon that and change it up so that someone goes, oh, right, so they're doing yoga. That's interesting. If I just showed you the picture of these are the men that are in prison. They're a bunch of murderers and rapists. We wouldn't care about them at all but they do yoga. Now there's an interesting story. Why are they doing yoga? Who knows? That's where the story lies. That's where the interest factor lies. Okay, I promised you guys were gonna be doing something. You will get there event eventually. So, expectation should inspire you. It should guide you, it should motivate you, and it should be your benchmark. Now how do we do that? How do we make sure that that's what it does? Whatever you're coming up with, whatever story you're coming up with, whether it's in a game or in a book or in a play or in a role-playing session, expectation should inspire. If you say, right, I'm going to set my game in a swamp, you immediately can use your expectation of what is in a swamp. If it's a swamp in, say, southern USA, we expect alligators, we expect rednecks, we expect those boat things that have got a giant fan on the back, right, that they, the swamp skippers, I don't know what they're called, Google will tell me. If we go for a swamp here in Finland, you must have swampy, boggy, marshy areas. I'm not expecting alligators. What would I find in a swamp in Finland? Witches. Witches. Cloudberries. Yeah. What is a cloudberry? They, they look like um, raspberries, but they're orange and they're a bit more fun. All right, so there's a culinary experience to be had inside the swamps of Finland. That's great. Okay, cloudberries. What else will we find in a swamp? Yes. Mosquitoes. Mosquitoes. Yes, I heard about that. I'm like, no, we, a, mosquitoes are an African thing. You guys can't take that away from us. We have malaria for a reason, right? We can take them back. Thank you. I'll let the governments know. You can come and collect your mosquitoes, right? Okay, so mosquitoes, what else? Uh, our swamps are not, like, they're not as wet, maybe, as American ones. Like, they're not as I like that. So we can use that. So, yes, another thing. If the uh, bog is wide enough, you often have some sort of a small path through. Aha, yeah. right. It's like a wooden, wooden path so you don't fall into the swamp. Sure, absolutely, yeah. The trees in the swamp are usually very weaker than very short. Like miniature versions of whatever trees you find, they're just very small versions of them. 
Fantastic. Yes. <laughs> bulldozers and environmental activists that are currently being attacked by mosquitoes. Right. Yes. Yes, that as well. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> Sorry? Football. Yes, yes, yes. As in so Right, okay, so we're starting to build a very interesting picture about our swamp in Finland. But now do you see how, just by going, what, what, we are inspired. This, if we're going to make a horror game, our character, our player, is going to wander through the swamp walking on nice little wooden boards. They're going to walk past a soccer match, because <laughs> that's a thing. They're going to get attacked by mosquitoes. They're going to have a nice meal of, of cloud berries, right? Uh, what else is going to happen? They're going to encounter a witch. Uh, so, so these are the things that you as Finnish players would expect. Or at least you'd certainly be going, oh, yeah, of course we have that here. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. They've been to a, swim, a Finnish uh, a swamp, right? So look at how it's now guided us. Our game has got so much more personality now, or our story's got so much more personality, just by going, what do we expect? And we've got this amazing story. I mean, how are we going to work the soccer game into... into <laughs> is it witches playing soccer? I mean, I, who knows? Who knows, right? And then we've got the slightly muddy ground. So there's many, many options that we have. So that's where it then starts to motivate us, to then start asking those kinds of questions. How do we add in a swamp to th with cloud berries? And how do we get the names and the themes and the things across? So expectation is a really strong guide. And then it's also a benchmark. Imagine now if I released, let's say, let's move away from, from gaming, although oh, from, from computer games or, or mobile games, as, this, as it seems to be. Let's say that you're um, reading a book and this character is struggling through a Finnish swamp and they come across an alligator. If we don't justify where and why that alligator is there, the benchmark test has failed. And the reader, if they finish, goes, but there are no alligators here. There are African mosquitoes, but there are no <laughs> alligators. So what it does is it breaks the illusion that the reader is in, because suddenly it's no longer real. And that's all just from what we expect. We haven't done any real work yet. So expectation is a really, really strong guide for you to test your ideas against. So the next time you're having an idea, what do people expect? And this is why I said it, it's, it's a much more uh, personal thing. It's a much more controllable thing. I expect you all to recognize this, this fellow here. Uh, we all know him. Such a nice guy. Uh, does anyone... Anyone know him? Any, any film students here at all? He's a neighbor of you guys, kinda. <laughs> Sergei Eisenstein. Sergei Eisenstein was a filmmaker from Russia. He developed the Kulshov effect, which is basically the idea that we as humans expect stuff. And he used that in his filmmaking. He made a very, very important film called Battleship Potemkin, which was a very big film, big black and white silent movie about the Battleship Potemkin. Okay, so storytelling wasn't very good, but <laughs> the idea was there, all right? And what he did was he said, here is an image. What do I expect from that image? Does anyone expect anything from that image? A commercial. Right. We expect a commercial probably for some deodorant named Bob or I don't know. What, what would we call it? Axe or sword or spear or pick, a, pick a, a thing. Now what do we expect? A, an infomercial? Perhaps? 
Okay, so it's now it's linked to the commercial idea. Can you give me a way that we could link that together? There is no wrong answer here, by the way. Just a stupid one, so don't, don't worry. Freaky Friday? Freaky Friday? <laughs> right? Okay. Freaky Friday, that's an interesting one. Okay, absolute yes. They both look at the camera, which is the other one. Whose they are seeing each other, which means that they are probably either seeing each other or they are going to leave each other. Right. Absolutely, absolutely. So they're possibly looking at each other if we, if we look at it from that perspective. They're both looking directly into camera. So if we were to see the one and then we would see the other and then we'd see the one again, we would assume that they're looking at each other. So we could possibly say it's his dog or it's his human. I don't know, um, right? What happens when we then do that? Does the story change? Is it still an infomercial? Is it still a commercial? Right? She's trying to avoid eye contact. Is there a story there? They're both sad. There's still drama between them. There's drama between them. Okay. Maybe they're breaking up. So we've gone from the dog and the man. Yes. His mother is disapproving him. Now I like it. Now we're starting to get some interesting stories. And the only thing that's changed is the image that's next to him. Okay, they got laughter, so that's a different reaction. Is it, is it, what are we seeing here now? A Tinder match. A Tinder match. <laughs> wow. Okay. They are a kind of cute couple, all right? Okay, so absolutely, do you see how we suddenly are changing up our expectations? And in this case, it's as simple as just changing the imagery that we are seeing. So that's another huge component to expectation, especially if you are working in a space that involves imagery. So we have expectation that sits in the mind. We talk about a Finnish swamp, and we saw all of the expectations that we had here. Now we're seeing an image, whether it's a computer game or a TV series or a podcast, and our expectations keep changing depending on what we're showing our audience. So we have these multiple levels of communication going on that keep changing the way we perceive things. But if we do it in the wrong way, or if we don't give expectations to our audience, we create a disconnect. So we have to be very careful about that. Okay, let's see what comes up next. I'm never sure with these. Right, great, okay, fantastic. I'm just going to go randomly. Uh, right, white shirt. You were looking at me. You didn't look away. Sorry. Sorry, too late. Yeah, no, white shirt. What, what color? It's pink? Yeah. Wait, is this one of those blue? Is it blue? Is it gold things? <laughs> okay, sorry, pink. Uh, like a Labrador. Like a Labrador. Who saw a Labrador when they saw the word dog? You're on your own. Okay. <laughs> Let's go gray shirt, green bag. Corgi. Corgi. Wow, okay. Corgi. Uh, let's go purple maroon shirt with glasses. Sheba. Sheba. What type of dog is that? The Japanese dog. I probably should know that since I live in Tokyo, right? Okay, dogs in Tokyo just bark at me because I don't look like I should be there. So I don't really like to, the Japanese dogs. Anyway, all right. So we've got a whole bunch of dogs coming through. Now, what type of dog are we thinking about? Uh, let's go there in the back, the black shirt with the, I was going to say beard, and I realize that doesn't narrow it down at all. <laughs> all right. So one of you four at the back there who've got black shirts on. A small dog. A small dog. What he said, a small dog, a chihuahua. Let's come down here. Uh, what type of dog? Yeah. Um, King Charles Spaniel. King Charles Spaniel. You're a very elegant dog until it starts eating. And its ears <laughs> fall in its food and it just becomes a disaster. All right, absolutely. So we're getting different types of dogs. I think you guys are getting the, 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 the point that I'm driving home here. 
is that although it's the same word, it's the same idea, we change it up by adding a descriptor to it, and we're getting a different image. None of them are wrong. And it's also, okay, apart from the little dog, which is a little bit stereotypical about women having little dogs rather than, say, a Great Dane or an Irish wolfhound, sure, we're building up different images. What would that one look like, by the way? A hyena. <laughs> oh, a human. Well, that's an interesting idea, absolutely. So humans treat, well, aliens treat these uh, humans as dogs, take them for walks and things. Uh, probably make the society a bit better anyway. All right, so absolutely, absolutely. All right, does everyone get the idea of expectation? I think you guys are smart enough that we can move on, right? Okay, hopefully the slides. Right, individual, you've seen that. Where does that come from? And this is what's important. And I've certainly been learning this. I moved from South Africa, which is a third world country, to Japan, which is an ultra first world country. I've been here in Finland now for a while. I've worked in the US for a while. So I've started to see that these are very important. So you guys, who is not from Finland here? We've got two people who are not from Finland. Three, four. OK, a couple of people are not, who are not from Finland, right? Most of you will have expectations based on where you grew up. Who you grew up with, they will entrench your expectations. How are we doing for time? Because I don't notice time. No, you still got 20, like 15 minutes. 15 minutes. OK, so then we go <laughs> on uh, with who grew uh, who you, <laughs> All right, so the types of TV shows you watched. I grew up watching something called He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. <laughs> There's more laughter. Did you actually, do you know about that show? Yes. Right? I'm not talking about the reboot from 2002, which was okay, but the originals. Yes, now it's a meme type of thing, absolutely, right? A She-Ra Lot. Well, that's yeah. fantastic. They're releasing a new animation based on She-Ra coming up shortly. So that's what I grew up with, which was, it's, it's now looking back at it, you go, yeah, that was a bit weird. Um, <laughs> Won't make any comments about the lead character wearing pink all of the time and influencing me at all, right? The books that we read, obviously. Um, has anyone read Tolkien? You know, The Lord of the Rings, that book? Yeah. Right? Yeah, everyone, uh, 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 we're in a fantasy convention. Of course we've all read Tolkien, right? <laughs> so that certainly happens. Our heroes, who we idolize, who are our heroes, they're going to influence our expectations. Our villains, they influence our expectations. My personal favorite villain is Skeletor from He-Man and the Master of the Universe. He was really good. He just had really bad employees. <laughs> so anyway, if you change your expectations, if you suddenly go, hang on a moment, what about people who haven't grown up with things like He-Man and the Master of the Universe? And trust me, I have experienced this where I go, well, you know that, that, that TV series, or you know that show, and people go, no, it was made before I was born. I don't know. You're old. Go away. You're not relevant anymore, right? So there are people who don't have that expectation. My YouTube channel that I run, frequently, I have people saying, you keep talking about this Lord of the Rings thing. What is that? I'm like, it was only like one of the greatest movies. Oh, it was a book first. But it was a movie that came out in 2001, which is now almost 20 years ago. Oh, my God. OK, fine. <laughs> I understand why you don't know what it was about. Go watch the movie or read the book. Either way, it doesn't really matter. They both take as long. All right? So. <laughs> But we have to anticipate the expectations of our audience, and we have to adapt accordingly. So you need to analyze your expectations, your answers, and go, aha, I expected virtually none of the answers about the Finnish swamps, especially <laughs> not the soccer. Right? <laughs> I expected trolls, but I suppose that, maybe is that, is that more Swedish? Yeah. Norwegian? And they're all hills. Yeah. Right, so that's my ignorance showing you. All right, so that's my ignorance showing. So you have to adapt what you think everyone takes for granted and then contemplate that and see how you can change that. Uh, so there's a picture. <laughs> Finally, the banana. Finally, the banana. So that's a good example. You were expecting a banana. What the hell was this thing doing with the banana? It's actually a sexual message. You should all play safe. Please make sure that you do that. OK. The idea of the banana is when you are stuck trying to come up with a story, with a narrative, 
with something that you are going to show to someone else and you're not sure how to proceed. It happens to us all. My advice is that you take a giant banana and you stick it into the middle of your story. Quite literally. Just stick it in there, right? What would happen if a giant banana suddenly fell on the floor right now? We would look up, probably. Some of us might wonder if the ceiling is going to continue holding. Some might be going, where the fuck did a giant banana come from? <laughs> right? Others might be going, who's got whipped cream? <laughs> because, uh, okay. So when you get stuck and you go, oh, I don't know what people expect. Insert a giant banana and ask the question, what would happen if a giant banana was suddenly found in the middle of a finished swamp? What would my character have to do? Do they have to navigate around it? Do they have to eat it? Do they have to get it from the, the witches? Do they have to give it to the soccer players? What are we doing with that giant banana? And what it does is it breaks your mindset out of your personal expectations. Because no one expects a giant banana or the Spanish Inquisition. <laughs> I'm so glad you laughed. I love being in Europe. Everyone gets that joke, right? OK, that's fantastic. In America, everyone's like, that was a thing in Spain, right? I mean, I don't know what. <laughs> like, no, it wasn't a thing in Spain. Well, yes, it was, but it wasn't. All right, moving on. So expectation is collective. And we saw that here. And again, it's where you grew up, who you grew up with. You guys gave me a wonderful description of a swamp in Finland, the types of TV shows that you watched. I was at the uh, Games Museum this morning, and there was a show, a couple of shows playing, sort of old television stuff from Finland. Um, and you look at that and you go, all right, yes, that explains a lot about the Finnish people. Um, <laughs> so again, it's collective, but it's country collective. Now, I was talking to a lot of the, the role-playing designers last night. Um, they've opened up a wonderful role-playing exhibition at the museum. And they've been designing games since the 80s. And you look at the themes that they're doing. You look at the ideas that they're coming up with. And they're tapping into a collective consciousness of Finland. Of course, when they take those ideas outside, you have people who have never heard of Finland or who kind of have heard of it as that one little place there between Norway and Russia, right? But they don't have many expectations. So that leads us to a problem. Uh, yeah, you get the idea, right? You have to use these, these expectations carefully. When I was designing this, I, I uh, emailed Yoni and I said, can I put Hitler into my presentation? Because in Germany, it causes problems. You have to be very careful about the way that you use Hitler in Germany, and for good reason, right? He said, we're finished. Fine, put him in. We don't care. <laughs> so we'll come across him eventually. <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> that was almost planned. <laughs> I wish it was planned, actually, but anyway. So what do we expect when we see this fellow, apart from who the hell thought that that moustache was a good idea? Chaplin. Chaplin. Well, yes, he did, actually, and it got him to a lot of hot water, didn't it? So when we see that man, it means a whole lot of stuff collectively to a whole lot of people. Now, my Finnish history is not particularly good, but as far as I understand it, Finland joined the Nazis during World War II, and then kind of didn't, and then kind of did, and then it was like, okay, so you're Switzerland, right? We're not helping the Nazis, but we might be helping them, but we're not really helping them. We don't, con we don't approve of what they're doing, but they can't, you know, you just carry on. All right, so... Well, there we go. You didn't want competition in the gaming world. I understand that. It's like, let's ship some out. And, and so, but there's all these expectations, right? And your expectations of Hitler are very different from an American expectation of Hitler. If you look at the uh, computer game Wolfenstein, does anyone know Wolfenstein? I mean, it's been around forever, right? The version of Wolfenstein in Germany, Hitler doesn't have a mustache. They had to release it separately because of the German laws about the portrayal of Hitler. Nowhere else in the world, our Hitler's got his little pencil moustache and we shoot him quite happily, <laughs> right? So expectations as a collective allows us to step back and go, what does the nation of Finland think? What does the nation of the USA think? 
How, do we can, how can we draw on that for inspiration and for design and to move things? Who, does any of you know who that is? Nelson Mandela. Nelson Mandela. What did he do? He was very famous. <laughs> That's what he did. Right? Nelson Mandela was the freedom fighter who made a very famous speech in the 60s. He was thrown into prison for 28 years. He wrote a very good book, which he hid in a toilet roll uh, piece of paper. Uh, he was made president of South Africa in 1994, and he facilitated the transfer of democracy into our country. And somehow people dispute when he died. Even the South Africans dispute when he died. We knew that he was being kind of kept alive for political reasons. Anyway, that's not the point. The idea here is we have two very different people. But the one on the right, we're not too sure what he did. Everyone goes, oh, that's Mandela. He was, he was great. <laughs> For what? Stuff. <laughs> so we then need to give context. We need to take the expectation. We need to assume the Northern Hemisphere doesn't really know who that bloke is. And then we need to give him context. So that's another thing that we need to use expectation for, is to change or to add information to the individual who is receiving our work. Okay? However, it's personal, right? Interpretation is guided by our experiences, our, uh, the, the quantity that we have gone through. Sorry, how's my time going? I, I, you said 15 minutes. Is you still have plenty of quantity of time. Plenty of quantity of time. Familiarity. Okay, by quantity, I mean it's how often are you exposed to it. So with the Mandela image, 94, heavily exposure. It was worldwide. South Africa was going to show everyone how to run democracy uh, into the ground. And that was the exposure back then. Maybe a little bit when he died. Then there was exposure around the sign language interpreter at his funeral who signed complete gibberish. He actually signed that it was a unicorn present. Um, that was a wonderful, wonderful display of uh, incompetence. And uh, familiarity, of course, is how familiar you are with the subject. And you cannot just assume that people are familiar with it. And then your desire. If you wanted me to give you a lecture on Star Trek, I could be here for five days talking about Star Trek. Or Star Wars, for that matter, because I, 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 I'm by star. I, I'll do either. <laughs> right? So your desire leads you to expect certain things. And you have to accept that not everyone has the same desire. You are incredibly passionate about whatever it is that you're talking about. Others might not be. So you need to stand back from that. So you need to cater to the expectation, uh, to, to the expectation that you want, and then you have to stick to it. Now, that's the important thing, is although we've been talking about Figure out what other people expect. Figure out about what you expect. Choose it and then stick to it. Don't change it. Adapt it, adjust it. And you'll see we'll get there shortly. Oh! Did anyone expect that? Well, we expected a banana, but a pink one? And did you know this is not a digitally enhanced image? You can actually buy bananas that are pink on the inside. That is the name of the particular banana that you can buy that is pink. It's custom designed. Okay? We've been changing fruit all the time. Carrots were not originally orange. They were purple. But then William of Orange, the Dutch king, took over England, and England went, we want to celebrate that he's taken us over, so we're going to make carrots orange. Isn't that exciting? <laughs> okay, so we were saying it was universal. We're all mostly human. We have to bear in mind some people live in their basements, and design computer games all day. <laughs> so, we need to remember that. Evolution has forged in us a storytelling component. We have to do that. If you believe in evolution, if you are more religious, it was put there by a superpower. Right? But, generally speaking, we have to tell a story. We want to tell a story. And you have to accept that your player, your reader, whomever it is that you are dealing with, is going to be trying to tell a story. And when they can't tell a story because of something that you have done, they get frustrated and they then don't know what to do. And that's the last thing that you want. You don't want anyone to be frustrated because then they're not interested in your game. Or they're sitting there going, 
well, why did they do that? That's so freaking weird. Meanwhile, your game is carrying on or your movie is carrying on, right? We all expect and we can't help it. The moment someone says something, you cannot help but have a thought. Most people. What do we expect is going to happen there? Does anyone see what he's doing? <laughs> An oxyacetylene torch is used next to the gas canisters, right? <laughs> it's not... <laughs> Yes, and then we expect an explosion and the gene pool to improve. No, it won't explode. Here are the engineers talking, I suppose. <laughs> These things need all sorts of things. So there we go. So do you see the different expectations? I looked at that, and first I couldn't work out why it was so funny. Then I realized, oh, because the, the, the thing's going to blow up. Oh, ha, 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 ha. And now we hear, actually, it isn't going to explode. Thank you for ruining the meme. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean that with the greatest of respect. Right. So... What happens when none exists? Like soccer playing witches in a Finnish swamp. No one would ever expect that, right? We then have to establish it. We have to create it. So you have to bring it in to whatever it is that you're telling us. Whatever it is, whether it's a game or a story, you need to establish that in our minds that we go, ah, a soccer player, great. So that might be at the very beginning of our montage, we come across in the mud the slightly soft mud, but not particularly wet mud, we come across a deflated soccer ball. That's all we need to do. Because now the player or the viewer is going, why is there a deflated soccer ball in the swamp? Then we see the soccer players and we go, oh, okay, I expected something with the soccer ball. There it is. I'm no longer suddenly surprised that there are soccer players in a finished swamp. It was as simple as that. Suddenly, we've solved the story. We've solved the entire thing, as opposed to a player coming across a bunch of soccer players in the swamp going, well, that's stupid. <laughs> so simple, just by adding in a soccer ball at the very beginning. We can grow it. So we expected witches, right? Our Finnish witches, the old bent over hags with haggly hair and big noses. They could be. They could be. What are they normally like? Some are male. Okay. Shaman-esque kind of things. Okay. So we can grow that idea. We can add to it. We can make it. We can develop it. Again, by just giving little clues. They don't have to be giant billboards or 20 pages worth of text saying, oh, by the way, when you see this witch, it could be a male or a female, and they could be a shaman, and they could be, you know, this, this type of uh, faith, etc., etc., etc. And we need to stick to it. Once you've put it in, if you put a deflated soccer ball at the beginning... I better see soccer happening at some point. Because otherwise I finish the game and I go, I expected something to happen with the soccer ball. But nothing happened with the soccer ball. Meanwhile, it was a great game, but they're going, but there was no soccer in it. I don't understand why there wasn't any. But it was a great game! Yes, but there was no soccer in it. <laughs> <sighs> so once you've got it, you have to put it in and you have to let it run. Yes. Eventually. Great. Eventually. Great. Did you go back and play the game to unlock the mini game to get the thing? With the yeah, and you can play soccer, surprisingly, but like, it would not telegraph anywhere that, hey, you can do this now. Right. Right. Absolutely. They're lucky that you went back to do that. Yeah. Because a lot of people would have just gone, yeah, all right, whatever. <laughs> okay? I know I'm running out of time here. So, what do we expect when I say a warrior mouse? Sorry? Narnia. Narnia. Right. Absolutely. Let's get back in the closet. What do we expect when I say a tough female hero? Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman. Okay. Fantastic. Unless you're from Israel, in which case then there's all sorts of issues, and then your feminist movement complains that she's an Israeli, and she, ah, it just gets nasty. Spider-Man. We Spider expect... Pool. Spider... Pool. Spider... Pool. Spider Pool. <laughs> yeah. We all, we all have hoping for that movie, right? Okay. <laughs> What about Arnold P. Haukis? What do we expect when we see that? I beg your pardon? How does he kiss? How does he kiss? <laughs> right, absolutely, absolutely. But generally we expect sweet bugger all because we have no idea who he is. So we have nothing to work with. So expectation, fail. We need to elaborate a little bit more on that. We can have some, uh, some ideas, but without any kind of build-up, we don't know what it is. All right?
think I'm getting to the end of these slides. I don't remember how many there were. Do you see you're getting your money's worth for bringing me out here as I just talk forever? All right, okay. So, <laughs> that wasn't a friendly look. It was like, yeah, you shut up. <laughs> okay, so, to use expectation as inspiration, we can draw from what is expected, right? We know that. Then, we can turn it upside down. So, how do we turn the soccer match upside down? Well, we didn't really expect it in the first place, right? So, it was pretty damn weird. But how can we move it even further along those lines? Ice hockey. Ice hockey. Okay, right? Ice hockey in the swamp? Absolutely fine. We can turn it upside down that way. We can turn it upside down that the witches are playing soccer. And it's witches versus shamans. Or, you know, they're all shirtless. That would be terrifying. Uh, <laughs> somehow we can turn it upside down. You don't always have to turn it upside down. You can leave it as is. We expect certain things. So if you look at the Harry Potter series, everyone know Harry Potter? Right? I look like him when I shave and lose about 200 kilos. Um, it's something you can imagine later on tonight. Um, so Harry Potter went, right, we've got a wizard university. Was it a unique, or interesting, or different idea? No. Wizard universities have been around for a long time. Rowling did not change our expectation. We expected weird and wonderful professors, and we expected the school kids to go through the usual schoolyard angst that they all go through, and we expected magic, and we expected dragons and giants, and that's exactly what we got. And we were happy, right? The publishing company was exceptionally happy. <laughs> the movie producers were happy. So, and we as viewers were happy, generally speaking. I hated the movies, but that's just me personally, right? Expectation is a guide. We understand the expectation, we follow the expectation, we use the expectation, we're golden. And if you want to be, oh no, but I'm breaking the mold. I'm being different. That's great. Go and ask Arnold P. Haukes how it turned out for him. <laughs> Nobody knows who he is. Except perhaps his mother. <laughs> so we like to be rewarded for being able to expect the future. That's what humans do. I like to be able to predict that this is what's going to happen. Ah, and then it happens. Oh, I'm such a smart human. We like that, I'm afraid to say. We really do, right? So make sure that you hand it to that. As a motivator, if you're finding it difficult to move forward, ask expectation, what should we do? It's as easy as that. What does expectation tell me should happen next? And it will tell you. And if it doesn't, you can ask Google. Right, so as our benchmark, you can test your ideas versus expectation. If they fit, great. If they advance it, even better. If you push the expectation further, that's great. And if they, don't exp if they don't satisfy it, then you have a problem. Because then we have a disconnect. So it doesn't mean that you throw your idea away and you start again. What it means is you need to now go back and you need to establish it. Then you need to grow it so that we understand why there are soccer playing witches in the swamp all topless. And then you give us what we want. Suddenly, that expectation has now been developed and generated so that for generations to come, whenever Finland releases a game or a story based in a Finnish swamp, everyone will expect naked witches. <laughs> and you've suddenly set a trend. Challenge by advancing, not ignoring or destroying. Destroy at your peril. You will insult geeks all over the world. And they are not kind. Right. What is an elf? Is that an elf? The Americans would say yes. Right? Is that an elf? Right? Yes. Yes, it is. Is that an elf? Why not? It's a dwarf, you silly fool. All right, absolutely. It's a dwarf. Is that the one on the left, uh, the right, an elf? Yes. Possibly. Yes. In the movie, it's called an elf, and they kind of made them or behave differently from the other species. She could be a Vulcan. No? The sci-fi Star Trek geek is going, she's not a Vulcan, her ears don't curve properly, it's not a Vulcan. <laughs> All right? But that's the idea, what Bright did. 
Has anyone seen Bright, by the way? Yeah. yeah. Okay, if you've got Netflix, you can, you can have a look. It's an interesting idea. It, it, to me, that I went, yeah, it's kind of cool, but we've been doing that in role-playing for 20 years, so it's not really pushing it very far, right? Okay, I've, I, don't, I don't speak Finnish, so sorry, I can't, I don't know what that means. What, <laughs> what, do, you, what do you expect it to mean? <laughs> I expect it to mean get the fuck off the stage. <laughs> All right, so... Uh, I'm not going to go through this very quickly. That was an interactive exercise, so just pretend that you all interacted and had a wonderful time and then tell it to your friends. All right? Um, this was going to be a fun exercise as well. You were going to pair up with people. I, again, I realized it might not have been appropriate to finish people if you have to talk to someone else. Uh, this, this, this was a thing. All right? But the idea was that you're going to tell a story on how they look. Sherlock Holmes is very famous for doing this. You guys know Sherlock Holmes? Yeah. Right? Okay, in any version, whether you, you want to go with the traditional version or the remakes or the remakes or the remakes, that's our expectation playing on us, right? Okay, I'm going to end it there because there are lots more slides to go through, but we have run out of time. I have spoken too much. So tomorrow, if you can have a whip, just smack me on the side of the head and I will stop talking straight away. All right, thank you very much for being interactive. Are there any, do we have time? We don't have any time for questions either. We do have time for questions. 15 minutes for questions. You gave me 15 minutes. I could have been talking for 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yes, questions. Go for questions. As a person now, I'm expected to be first. Yeah, well, <laughs> it is kind of implied. What would I do if you told me there was a giant chestnut behind me? Yeah, that's a question I asked during a lot once. During a lot, you asked what would I do if there was a giant chestnut behind me? Yeah, because uh, overstuck on what to do. Right, absolutely. Uh, so it's a good question. What would I do if there was a giant chestnut behind me? Is it going to eat me? <laughs> no, it's just there. So it is very spiky. So I can weaponize it. <laughs> Because that's the first thing that sticks in my mind when you tell me there's a giant spiky ball here. I can use that in a LARP to commit violence against someone. However, one person responded, I can crack it open and make a helmet. Right. There we go. Much more practical. Much more practical. So, again, that's just a, a wonderful example of expectation in action. Yes, another question. Where's the link between expectation and surprise? That's a very good question. Next question. <laughs> there is an example. So the expectation was that I would have some very intelligent response to your question. I had bugger all, so I threw it as a joke. So I used the expectation to do that. So where is the difference between expectation and surprise? It is literally in when you give the answer or the, the expected so solution to the audience. When do you do that? And that is all about comedic timing. It's all about personal narrative theme timing. It's your writing style. When do you do that? But the idea is, is if you know that there is an expectation, you give it to the audience, but you give it when you want to give it. You do have to give it. You do have to do it. But you do it when you want to do it. And you can build up to it. And you can play around it. Don't delay for too long, because otherwise they will forget about it. But you can absolutely use that to your advantage. So that's how you do surprise. You d still give it to them. You have to give it to them because otherwise they're going to feel unfulfilled. But you can delay it or speed it up depending on, on how you want to play it. Other questions from this side? Yes? Just wondering, um, I know like open to make this available so we can get uh, We can do it. We can do it, absolutely. Uh, yes, uh, we can do it on the Tracon website, absolutely. Otherwise, uh, we can put it up on our website as well. We'll make them available. They don't... I'm very lazy as a slide writer, so the notes are not there. It's just these random pictures of hot guys. Uh, yeah, and bananas. Not helping my case. All right. Any other questions? Over there. Yes. I would stop reading. <laughs> I get very frustrated. So here's a, here's a great example because I was already speaking to, to uh, uh, the, the driver who drove me from Helsinki here. Uh, Mass Effect Andromeda. Does anyone know Mass Effect Andromeda? Who liked Mass Effect Andromeda? I liked it. 
one per so, so you would play it 12 times. You would recommend everyone spends 50 euros to buy it, um, and it's possibly the greatest game ever made. It's a little bit of a harsh like, but you, know, you need to get it. So we got one person in the audience who liked it. And the reason was our expectation of Mass Effect is this amazing universe with all these different weird races and lots of lore and lots of history. And then Andromeda came along and said, you get two races. And you can finish the game without doing the actual object that you're supposed to do. You're supposed to collect these ships, these arcs that have been sailing off all over the place. I played the game because I was a Mass Effect fan, and I finished it before I got all the arcs. And I was like, wow, that was my expectation dashed. I had expected this wonderful thing. So when you do that, you end up with a Hollywood movie that doesn't get a sequel. <laughs> and we can see that. There are a whole lot. Look, at, Does anyone remember the movie Aragon? Yeah. Right? That had dragons and wizards and... Uh, Jeremy Irons in it. That's a guarantee for a cool movie, right? Because it's Jeremy Irons. No, we don't have Aragon 2 because the studio went, huh, the audience didn't like it. It had everything that we were expecting, but it didn't do anything with those expectations. And it didn't really push anything. It didn't go anywhere. And it, it, it very limply gave it to us, right? It didn't even have all the expectations. It didn't even have all of the expectations, especially if you'd read the book. Right? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Look at The Hobbit. Who here liked The Hobbit trilogy by Jackson? A couple. <laughs> yeah, I like the credits because um, it meant the movie was over. So that's an expectation problem. Lord of the Rings came out almost 20 years ago. Everyone loved it. We then have The Hobbit and everyone goes, what the fuck happened? Jackson, what, what, we, what why, huh? He didn't have enough time, he admitted that. The studios were pushing him to release it, etc., etc. That's no excuse. The expectations were not delivered either. It was this really long movie about a very simple, simple kind of idea. So that's, that's, that's the reaction that you get when you have or you build up and then you just don't deliver, is that no one's interested. Right. Or uh, you like certain aspects of it, but then you kind of you you also realize that yeah yeah they they were sort of hinting at this during the first two seasons and then it didn't go anywhere. Absolutely, absolutely, and and that's often a case of too many chefs spoil the broth, right? That's when you've got executives and you've got producers. If you're talking TV series and things, the writers have changed. That expectation is no longer being followed through. As I did in the slides, you have to stick to it. Once you've said this is what's going to happen, you need to make sure that it runs all the way through. Right? Game of Thrones, the last season, uh, it's not a spoiler, the last season felt very rushed for a lot of people because people were going from the north to the south and back to the north in the space of two scenes. Whereas in season one, it was the entire season to get from the north to the south and back again. Right? So there was, there was issues there. And th for them, it was just a budget thing. They had to wrap up the show because they've only got so much. Any more questions? Yes? Right, absolutely, absolutely correct. And, and Spider-Man is a great example of that, or the Hulk movies. I, I, I haven't watched any, I watched the first Hulk movie, which was a very touching family drama, um, particularly dull family drama as well. It was like, oh, it's dad issues, really, really? George Lucas is doing that, and now Disney's carrying it on. Uh, but it, it, so how do you make it fresh? Well, it's by taking that expectation and saying, what do we expect? We expect X, Y, and Z. How can I change not completely change X, but how do I make it different? So within the superhero genre, how do we make it different? How do we make that origin movie different? Because it's always the same thing, isn't it? We meet the character when they're normal, then we see the disaster that they go through, then we meet some villain that they're going to fight, and then they basically don't win, and then they win at the end, right? That's, that's the formula. And you can time it to the minute, as a matter of fact. 
So how do we make it fresh? How do we make it different? Well, it's how we present it that makes it different. So if you look at the three Spider-Men that, so, that we've had so far, you had Tobey Maguire. His Spider-Man was basically crying every movie, all the time. He cried more than his female counterpart, and I'm not stereotyping here, but he was really just snotty throughout all three movies. Okay? Then we had Garfield who came in and he had his weird little smile and everyone was kind of okay with him, but his villains were really kind of dull because we'd seen them before, right? So Garfield's stuff didn't really work out and then he was basically a dick and he got fired and the whole thing fell apart. So then they said, okay, let's do it again. This time we're going to make him this really cute little twink boy who really just lusts after Tony Stark all the time. <laughs> and everyone was like, oh, there's that uh, spider pool movie. Right? Although that would be a, 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 a... What have you done to me, right? Okay, so expectation, we use it to then try and move it forward. So you can say, this is what we expect. How can we make that different? And it could be as simple as, let's do it where the superheroes lose their powers. How do they now react? Or what if those superpowers come and go? Maybe it's, let's do the story of Superman on Krypton, where everyone has the same powers. Now it's a different kind of story. Is it still a superhero story? Well, we expect certain things from superhero stories, so you're going to have to give us that, but you're presenting it in a different way. I know that doesn't sound like it's really answering necessarily, but it really is about looking at... And, and it's an exercise you can do. You just write down what you, what you expect. And you can ask your friends, hey, what do you expect from a, a Spider-Man? Oh, I expect this, this, and that. And then it's about looking at maybe one or two components that you can change... Or if you take them away, or if you take a giant banana and you stick it in there and you go, well, what happens if Spider-Man shot bananas from his wrists? <laughs> what would change? <laughs> right? Well, that would change a lot of things. <laughs> Banana boy to begin with. <laughs> right. So anyway, take what is established and then look at how you can tweak it or change it or present it in a different way. Or if you're going to use what's already been established, Remember, expectation is not story. So how you tell the same expectations, if you tell it in a different way, will still feel fresh and will still feel new. Uh, and th that's the best sort of way to do it. Are we... Uh, we can still expect one more question. Yay, we can expect one more question. Will it happen? Yes. Aha. So, a good example. How do we handle expectation in a mystery? We don't want the reader or viewer or player to be able to anticipate the solution, right? But isn't it true that as a, a, a participant in that, whether I'm reading your book, when I pick up your mystery book, my expectation is that I won't be able to figure it out until the end. So that's where my expectation starts. So if on page one I go, yeah, it was the lady in the red shoes, it doesn't work. Now, it's an interesting question that you ask, because does anyone remember Murder, She Wrote? Which really should have been called How I Got Away with Killing 900 People, <laughs> right? Because wherever she went, people died. <laughs> okay, so we all know those kind of jokes. So with Murder, She Wrote, it was a huge series in the, in the um, uh, 90s uh, that just ran on forever and ever, and Angela Lansbury just won't die. Right? But that's okay. In that, it was a mystery. Every time it was a mystery. And it was a formulaic mystery. She would arrive, someone that she knew or someone around her would die, and then she'd get involved, and then she would solve it. I was watching an episode the other day. Do not do that. It did not age well. Okay? <laughs> and she walks in and she's asking some woman, she says, uh, did you know the body was found on the beach? And the woman goes, no, I didn't know that the body was found on the beach, but why was she wearing pink shoes? And I went, oh, hang on, that's the murderess, because she didn't say wearing pink shoes. So she said wearing pink shoes, no one knows about the body, so that's the murderess. And of course that was the murderess. Because the way that they were telling those stories in the 90s was for a 90s audience who didn't expect, oh, the lady in the pink shoes, they didn't pick up on that. But because I've been exposed to so many of these things now, and we're a lot sharper in terms of how we hide our mysteries, it was obvious. 
And that, that, that will happen. So then you look at how do we now change these mysteries? How do we move them forward? You get things like uh, Now You See Me, Now You Can't, those two films, where we expect certain things. I watched the first one, and I was like, but that's cheating. They're not actually, it's, it's cheating. They are actually using special effects as magic. It's not, a, it, anyway. Right, I have high blood pressure. I don't want to die in Finland. Um, all right, so, so, so yes, when you, when you are doing something, again, it's saying, what is the core expectation first? How do I play with it? So when you're writing a mystery, and there's so much that we can talk about writing mysteries, but when you write a mystery, what do we expect? We expect the butler. We expect, we expect someone to seem like they're guilty. But it's not them. It's never them. And if it is them, at the end of it, we go, oh, fuck, we knew that in chapter one. Oh, that was a waste of my life. So you actually can't have it as them unless you're really tricky and then you can have it as them if you've established that it definitely wasn't them, but it was a twin. Maybe, right? If you want to look at how expectations, and it's a very solid demonstration, watch Scream 1, Scream 2, and Scream 3. Those movies came out playing on the idea of a slasher movie. And they made three playing on the idea of a slasher movie, and all three are very different. And yet they're all the same premise. A man in a mask kills people. So it's a good example, a very good uh, yeah, example of, of, of that. We're done? We're done. You can stay for the next presentation. <laughs> Thank you very much.